Can everyone hear me? Perfect. If you asked me right now to dance in front of a room full of people, I would. But if you asked me to speak in front of a crowd and tell my story, I'd gladly decline. But unfortunately, thanks to Skylar, I couldn't tonight. <laughs> you see, dance for me is more than a hobby, a passion, or even my life's purpose. It's a language. It's how I communicate and experience the world. And it's an identity that is salient to me as being a black woman or being from Southeast. I didn't always know I was a dancer though. It took a few gentle nudges from the universe for me to figure that out. When I was a kid living in City Heights, there was a public access channel that I randomly came across. At certain times during the week, they would air a variety of art performances. There were scenes from operas, broadways, symphonies, and famous ballets. There were a number of performances that had me in awe. I remember checking every day to figure out when the art performances were on. Once I found the right day and time, I would stay up late on the weekends and watch as many performances as possible. After a while, I started to enjoy the ballet performances more than others. Despite, despite my weekly excitement, though, watching interesting and beautiful performances, dance wasn't something I saw myself doing. And then there was the day I actually fell in love with dance, channel surfing. I came across the Dance Theater of Harlem perform the Creole Giselle. That dance changed my life forever. It was the first time that I had seen a full length ballet performed by an all black ballet company. And truly it was the first time I had ever seen a black ballerina. The dancers have beautiful feet and legs and varying skin tones, reminiscent of my own and my family members. Their tights and shoes matched, or in other words, they weren't wearing pink tights and pink shoes. Most people don't know this, but Ballet shoes and tights only come in pink or light coral because it's a white person's nude. It helps to create an illusion. There's no break in the body line from head to toe. However, most black dancers are forced to wear pink tights and ballet shoes, making them brown on top and pink on the bottom. I never saw black or even brown ballerinas on the public access channel I watched. I only saw white performers. When I saw the Dance Theater of Harlem on television, I saw myself. I saw my family, my friends, and my community being reflected back at me. I was emotionally moved by the Creole Giselle. The dancers moved me to tears and laughter. I was in awe at their ability to emote and to conjure up something inside of me that also made me feel something. I was a very shy child. So the idea of communicating without words was something that deeply resonated with me. I realized I had found a place where there was room to be exactly who I was. It was then that I knew that if I ever had the opportunity to be a dancer, I would. That day came not too far after. Out of the blue, my mother asked me if I wanted to go to the same school as my older cousin. She went to the School of Creative and Performing Arts at SCPA. I had gone to a few of her Broadway productions, which weren't quite ballets, but my mom said that they had ballets, so of course I said yes. I was now going to be able to dance like the black dancers that I saw on TV. So off I went to SCPA in the fifth grade at 10 years old. We eventually moved to Paradise Hills, followed by Skyline a year later. Going to SCPA, though, was a bit of a culture shock. Coming from City Heights, Paradise Hills, and Skyline, my communities were black and brown, and I ended up going to a school that was predominantly white. The difference in the landscape of my communities versus my school became symbolism for my experience in the world of ballet. I thought ballet would be fun. I would get to do all the things I saw on TV. However, that wasn't the case. I didn't feel like I fit. My flat feet didn't fit my seemingly curvier and muscular body didn't fit, and aesthetically my skin tone didn't fit, because remember, I'm brown up top, pink on the bottom. There were also a few, very few brown girls in the upper levels of ballet, and even fewer black girls. There were five to be exact, which eventually turned into four by my first year in high school. 
I slowly started to gravitate towards modern dance, specifically gram, which was an additional required dance style that I took in conjunction with ballet. It involves contracting the body and using your stomach to make beautiful shapes with the body. It was more grounded, earthy, and historically modern dance styles like gram were created as a form of rebellion against, excuse me, against classical ballet. This way of thinking suited me well, considering I was starting to rebel against ballet in high school. I no longer wanted to be a ballerina. I wanted to be a modern dancer. In the ninth grade, my dance teacher, Cynthia Morales, had a competition. Whoever sold the most items for our school fundraiser would get a free ticket to see Alvin Ailey at the Spreckles Theater downtown. That was a big deal for a young black girl in Skyline Hills. My mother would never have been able to afford two tickets in the nosebleed section, so I rallied and recruited all of my family members to sell sweet and savory treats to their coworkers. My plan worked, and I won a ticket. Actually, all the black girls busted their butts, and we all got to go and see Alvin Ailey. Alvin Ailey was and still is the most successful black American modern dance company in America, and I had the privilege of seeing them live for the first time in person. Up until that point, everything I had ever saw was on television. I watched beautiful black and brown dancers glide across the stage. They were doing the same grand movement that I was learning to perfect in class twice a week. I thought nothing could beat this moment until I saw the final piece, Revelations, which tells a story of African-American faith and tenacity from slavery to freedom through a suite of dance sets to musicals and blues music. The style of dance in Revelations is also defined as black dance, which is the telling of black American stories through movement. Everything in me shifted. I knew that black storytelling through dance was something I wanted to do. I wanted to tell stories and explore my emotions of growing up in Southeast through movement. I wanted to be free, and I felt none of those things in ballet. Dance soon became an outlet for me. I continued to work on my ballet technique because my teacher, Cynthia, was hell-bent on making me a ballerina whether I wanted to be one or not. She was the only teacher during my high school years who really believed that I could fit into this world, and she convinced herself that she can prove it to me. Miss Morales is a well-trained Hispanic professional ballet and flamenco dancer who attended Juilliard, which is basically the Harvard of dance schools. She navigated the world of classical ballet along with flamenco, which tied her to her culture and upbringing. It was hard being one of a handful of dancers of color in class. I was also the problem child for my school's costumer because I wasn't flat as a board on both sides. <laughs> I also wasn't able to pay to take additional classes outside of school like all the other kids. Some studios offer scholarships to take classes for free, but I wasn't able to get to the studios from Skyline Hills. My mother doesn't know how to drive and the bus only goes so far and runs so often. By the time I got from Paradise Valley Road in Meadowbrook to Balboa Park, La Jolla, or Pacific Beach, the last class was ending. Miss Morales knew this, so she took me and a few other dancers to a dance studio to take a class. So I could at least say that I've done it before. During my senior year, she also paid for me to go to the annual Black Dance Conference, which was being held in Dallas, Texas that year. She paid for everything, the flight, the hotel, the registration, which included dance classes, and all I had to do was show up, buy my food, and promise to be in the front of every class. She also made me promise that I made sure everybody there saw me, and everybody knew who I was and where I was from. The experience really gave me the opportunity to dance and to be around individuals who look like me and to be encouraged. It also taught me that despite my obstacles with access and representation, I was good enough and that I did in fact fit. I repped Southeast proudly in Texas and brought back a new sense of pride when I returned home. I've never been a strong classical dancer by ballet world standards. I don't have amazing feet with high arches and my legs are just okay. I have too much of an arch in my back and unfortunately too much junk in my trunk for them. But one thing I have always been is a great performer, and my ability to perform is rooted in my experiences of growing up in Southeast San Diego in a single parent low income household without a car. I've had to struggle, but my time in Texas also showed me that there was also pride 
dignity and care where I was from. I have a story to tell, and I'm able to do that through dance. I can remember when I started working as a professional dancer, my director asked me, what type of dancer did I see myself as? And I said, I don't know. I explained to him that I've always been drawn to classical ballet. I still love it even though I know the dance form wasn't made for me. Yet I felt deeply rooted in modern dance and stories behind black storytelling. And my confusion around my multiple dance identities, I did what I think we all do at times. I chose one and a half. I chose to be a modern dancer who sometimes does black dance. He looked at me with sincerity and said, but what about ballet? You are a ballerina, so why don't you claim that as well? The idea that I was a ballerina was something that I always thought I had no right to claim. I never felt like I was enough in the ballet world, nor did I feel that there was a place for my identities that are opposite of white and privilege. But he convinced me that I had internalized my past and carried it forward into my present and future. I was enough. I am Southeast San Diego and a classically trained ballerina. Our conversation that day birthed who I am today, a contemporary ballerina who was classically trained in ballet but deeply rooted in modern dance and black storytelling. Thank you.